So I think we should uh, get started. Our first speaker is uh, Baroness Jenny Tong. She was the uh, Lib Dem Member of Parliament for Richmond Park. Um, she was uh, in the when she was in the Commons, she was Liberal Democrat spokesman on international development and then on children. Um, and in uh, 2008, along with um, uh, several others, she was uh, she broke through the blockade of Gaza by vote, uh, vote and she visited Gaza, uh, among other things, which I'm sure you will hear about. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenny Tom. Thank you very much indeed. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Nick, and thank you for inviting me tonight. Before I say what I'm going to say, can I give a big welcome to the Jewish Chronicle, because I'm sure they're here. I never know quite who it is, but I'm sure they're here, and I hope that I see someone smiling. Yes, sir. Um, thank, you, um, thank you for coming, and I hope we give you lots of things that you can say about this. The second thing I want to say is that however any of you in, like to interpret my remarks, I am not anti-Semitic. In fact, I'm not anti very much at all, except injustice. And it is injustice that concerns me most. I am certainly anti the current Israeli government, and I am anti the Israel lobby that supports that government. But that is not being anti-Semitic, it is being anti the Israeli government and anti the Israeli lobby. Get it? Because it's very important to make that distinction and whenever you talk on these issues, people will refuse to make that distinction and accuse you of anti-Semitism. So I give all of you who may be supporters of Palestinians in this room that warning because once they have decided to go for you they will go for you Who's in they? a big way Who's in they? a big way there will be an opportunity they, for questions after they this. is the israel lobby i bear the scars now it's an interesting word apartheid it means separation we know that we know that the israelis don't like the word very much I don't suppose the South Africans like the word very much. I certainly don't like the word, never did. But if you go to the West Bank and Gaza and indeed into Israel itself, you will understand what it's all about. And one of the things that concerns me a lot is that whereas a lot of us activists who care about the Palestinian cause and want a just solution, whatever it may be, for the troubles in the Middle East. Whoever we are, quite often, we have only seen a lot of one side and not the other. And I say to the people from the pro-Israel lobby, the Zionists, whoever you are, for goodness sake, try and fight. If you have to disguise yourself as a Palestinian, it's not difficult. Um, get into the West Bank and try and get into Gaza and see what is being done in your name because you will be very, very shocked indeed. Now I expect all of you have heard and you're going to hear a lot tonight I'm sure about what goes on. Um, the West Bank, which is occupied territory, it is territory that was given by the United Nations to the Palestinian people when they were thrown out of the rest of Palestine. Um, it is occupied by Israel. There is a security wall, an apartheid wall, a separation barrier between Israel and the West Bank. The West Bank is racked and wrecked by settlements, by the roads linking the settlements that only settlers can use. It is wrapped by the fact that 80% of the water is taken by Israel. And I'll tell you one little story. When I was in Bethlehem some years ago, there was water coming through the taps in Bethlehem one day a week. And as we drove back into Jerusalem that evening, we saw the sprinklers on the lawns in the settlements on the way to Jerusalem. That is the way water is squandered in Israel, and yet, the Palestinians have very little. And what they have is polluted by 
sewage in most cases, particularly in Gaza, the pollution is absolutely appalling and makes the water undrinkable. So the West Bank is not a very nice place, especially as you have to go through checkpoints wherever you want to go, if you want to go to school, if you want to go to hospitals. There are checkpoints all over the place in Palestine itself, which are unpredictable and you don't know whether you're going to be held up or not. So if you want to see what it's like, and I must say the first time I went to the West Bank was in 2003, and I could not believe my eyes. I really could not believe what was going on. And there is one word that's, that sums the whole thing up, and that is humiliation. At every opportunity, Palestinians are humiliated, utterly humiliated by the Israeli soldiers and the officials in the West Bank. Now if you go to Gaza, things are even worse. And a lot of people tell you about Gaza. Ken's been to Gaza, I've been to Gaza four or five times now. The thing that worries me most about Gaza is because there is very little food, the children are malnourished. They are also drinking polluted water from sewage and from nitrates in the soil and over salination because they can't get fresh water. The children are also traumatized by planes, targeted assassinations, planes coming over, sonic booms, the sort of fun the Israeli Air Force have by issuing sonic booms in the middle of the night. It frightens the children, in fact it terrifies the children. 60% of them are malnourished, probably over that percentage with their beds, they don't concentrate well at school and their education is scanty. Their nutrition is appalling. Now it seems to me that that given and including the imprisonment that is Gaza, they can't get in or out, that is setting up a school for terrorism for the future. What are those children going to do? It is a nightmare world for them. And I haven't mentioned East Jerusalem, I'm sure Garda, you will mention East Jerusalem, but the one other factor I want to mention is what is happening to Arabs within Israel itself. They are discriminated against in so many ways. You can look it up on websites, there are so many laws that make their life of a lower standard than that of Israeli citizens. For a start, there's the one big one called the law of return. Any Jew from anywhere in the world can go back to Israel and settle, or can go to Israel, never having been there in their lives. But those people, like Garda's family, for instance, cannot go back to Israel, where their villages were before 1948. They cannot even visit without a great deal of trouble, and as far as I'm unaware of people being able to visit. So the law of return in Israel applies only to Jews, and as you know, there has been a big fuss recently because the Jewish constitution is being changed and it is being declared a Jewish state for Jewish people. And if you don't like that, and of course a lot of Arab Israelis do not like that, um, well then, you're supposed to get out. Expenditure on schools, expenditure on health, expenditure on welfare are all much, much less, a tiny fraction of what is spent on Israeli citizens. It is discrimination of the highest order and the Arabs in Israel have a very difficult time indeed. Marriage laws are stacked against them. Um, one interesting thing I read today, I saw that um, Haredi Jews in Israel are exempt from doing military service in the IDF. Now, if Arab Israelis refuse to do military service in the IDF, and who would want to if you're an Arab citizen because you have to go and attack your own people in the West Bank? Who would want to? But though they are then not allowed to receive tu tuition fees if they want to go on to university. They have to serve in the IDF first. And I would like to know, someone may be able to tell me, if the same applies to Haredi Jews. 
are they excluded from tuition fees if they it, don't it do nice their national service? Truth. It's an utter nonsense that our Well, I, it's allowed. not a nonsense. Yeah, there will be an opportunity for questions it's afterwards. Another it's example. Not. It's a lie, like all of your lies. Right, there will be an opportunity. Another, Sorry, you know. Another example. <laughs> I just want to sum up because recently there has been something called the Russell Tribunal taking place in several places. Kangaroo in the Court. World. Shh. With a lot of international lawyers and eminent people taking part, and I will just read you what its summary says at the beginning. It will take me a minute or so. The tribunal finds that Israel subjects the Palestinian people to an institutionalized regime of domination amounting to apartheid as defined under international law. This discriminatory regime manifests itself in varying intensity and forms against different categories of Palestinians depending on their location. They declare it is apartheid. And one final word I would say, it's squeaking, it's a mouse in it, never mind. One final word, I would ask those people who support Israel in this room what on earth they think Israel is doing. In the long term, they have lost all their allies in the Middle East. They have no friends anymore. The Arab Spring will go on and make sure of that. What does Israel do? Um, I will just in, uh, advise everyone in the room uh, that there will be an opportunity for questions after all of these uh, uh, these contributions from the uh, from the panel, and that if anyone is uh, found to be interrupting, I will ask you to leave. And I, I'm going to be quite uh, strict on that from now on, so you have been warned. Why aren't people allowed to film if there's two other lots of people filming? What's, uh, there's what's people, the, the people who are uh, uh, who are who have organised this are filming it. It's their event, and they've decided that they don't want any unauthorised films of this, uh, of this event made. They paid for this room? Uh, they, they are part of this university, um, and uh, I dare say you are not. What are the university rules? Taxpayers. <laughs> Taxpayers paid for the room. Uh, taxpayers paid for the room. Yeah, this is I can bring in taxpayers. We're not students here. Of students at this university, they put this students. event on, therefore they have the right to decide who films and who cannot. If you're unhappy with the, with the rules, you know where the door is. questions on the topic of who gets to film, are you be, have been warned that if you're filming and you're not the one authorised person, you will be asked to leave. And I'm, that's, that's not up for debate. Is this guy part of the university? Oh my oh, god. Are you part of the university? Can we please get on with this event, please? Let me see a student call. What are you ashamed of? <laughs> What you Nothing! Like, you're, you're, writing that, you're, you're, you're writing not, down reports! Uh, I'm not going to have any discussion amongst the floor, at least not just yet. So, um, yes, the person in, in front of me is, has been authorised, um, and, uh, uh, and that's the end of it, okay? No, I'm not going to take any more questions on it, and you know where the door is. Um,